So thank you first for having me. Platform. Thank you for the invitation to present to archaeologists. Uh, I am not an archaeologist, that's how I have to excuse at the beginning. But um, uh, my subject has to do more with the history of technology, that is my uh, perspective, my goal, and touches several points, uh, archaeology, and I will have to explain it at the beginning. So my initial goal <coughs> was, or is, um, the question how certain communities in China, in particular mostly Muslim communities, organized in the past and still organize in the present um, their technological activities, in particular building uh, dwellings that are known as um, cave dwellings, Yaodong. Um, now, this includes also planning, construction and maintenance, that is that was what is and was my goal. And even if uh, positioned in the present, my research uh, has at least two levels uh, touching uh, archaeology. Archaeology first, because these dwellings already exist, or not, not these dwellings, then this uh, description, the description of such dwellings um, corresponds to prehistorical um, dwellings that exist in that area for geological reasons. And the second uh, level of uh, contact is the fact that um, uh, the criticism, I will explain that towards the end of the presentation, uh, is inspired by prehistorical archaeology. So first I will explain somehow the geographical uh, frame, so the uh, Les Plateau um, across the Yellow River in North uh, Central China. Uh, some uh, comments on the conventional typology of these dwellings. I use the, the Chinese term Yaodong because it's so polysemic that uh, can include almost everything that you will see. Uh, then these flooding uh, evolutionary approaches and then the criticism I promised at the beginning to come to some conclusions which are more open questions and statements. What you see here will be one of the categories, but one of the categories of the sunken courtyard. Uh, we are in north central China. I apologize for the map. You see Beijing, so here the sea. Um, China goes another but, uh, to the west, uh, the desert uh, Patamakan with Xinjiang. And we have here the Yellow River, Huanghe, Xi'an, known for the Terracotta Army, not only for that, also for the Bampo uh, 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 Neolithic uh, uh, cave dwellings, that I will comment just in the following. And you have here the, the valley which is dominated by the, uh, this wind carried sediment, sand that uh, forms the loose uh, sediment and is, the, is sub, uh, subdued to uh, stark uh, erosion processes and is the place where uh, the, the, the geological formation uh, which is uh, characterized by uh, where these uh, dwellings uh, are characterized. So we have Shanxi, that is the, uh, the province which is Xi'an, on the north uh, Shanxi, then uh, the, the autonomous region of uh, Guangxi, uh, sorry, of Ningxia with uh, Muslim uh, uh, population or dominant population, the Gansu going to the northwest and Hendan uh, to the east. I said that uh, this term is used uh, was used uh, in the beginning of the 20th century in archaeological research to characterize pit caves found near Xi'an. Now you can visit it almost in the city of Xi'an. Uh, pit caves that were reconstructed, the reconstruction might have had also a roof. No, um, late, no, so early Neolithic, but probably 
existing still in the Mesolithic and eventually in the Paleolithic, uh, late Paleolithic uh, period. Some types of uh, Yaodong to see the, the variety of, the, of these constructions, that they are all man made constructions. So the first one. Uh, well, uh, first I have to say there is no single pit anymore, like uh, I showed in the prehistoric uh, but uh, we have this kind of sunk, sunken courtyard, the pit cave dwelling, some uh, architectural historical call it like that. Um, we have the cliff side, so built in the cliffs. Um, cave dwellings. We have the semi-below ground uh, dwellings, it's a combination of the both. And uh, the term is also used for this kind of independent hooped dwellings. Uh, I will explain somehow about the construction and then combinations uh, open end. The most Typical, from my point of view, are the cliffside dwellings, the artificial cave dug into cliffs, and sometimes with an extension outside the cliff. The sunken uh, courtyard, some call them pit cave dwelling, has a roof which is considered by the ground, the pit is dug into the ground and the dwellings are lateral. So the cave the dwellings are dug in the lateral surface of the pit. Before uh, explaining the way of constructing, which helps more to differentiate it between these um, artificial typologies, some words concerning the the so-called hooped dwellings or independent dwellings. They are mostly based on the sunken fundament. They are built by bricks of rammed earth excavated on site, that is Luch. They are covered by the same material, low soil or rammed earth, generally structured by wooden beams. So wood still uh, uh, does exist in these particular cases. And this type includes also uh, arcs constructed with bricks, but um, made by adobe, or sometimes uh, today by stones. Um, and they are they exist where no cliff neighborhood uh, is uh, seen. And they are considered from, by some um, architects to simulate a cave. Therefore, this term constructed caves may be found. Now, there is a, a heavy ideology going from the Neolithic to the present uh, concerning the process of development that we see here in the the single pits, although this, pro this series is, um, is not so continuous, there are intermediate steps, archaeologically still, mi oh, not still missing. But it is a dominant idea in historians of, uh, or especially Chinese historians of uh, the Chinese house. Um, the other premise is the ideological premise of emerging from the ground as a progress, civilization progress. And uh, this could be a possible itinerary reproduced in histories of uh, Chinese uh, housing. And there is also the valorization of the material of soil and the valorization of rocks as a primitive uh, soil and rocks as primitive materials wooden structure of something more noble. Uh, sorry. Now, I have skipped something. 
Uh, concerning the evolutionary approach, the evolution. Archaeologically, there are, there's evidence of multiple paths, and multiple evolution paths, even during the Neolithic and uh, afterwards. So the dwelling that comes out of the ground, where the soil is seen as a material of continuity, but also digging down with the experience of uh, having the, uh, uh, houses above the ground and simulating the housing above into the ground, and especially at, uh, lateral constructions of the sunken uh, uh, courtyard. So it is somehow a revalorization, revalorizing re the cave, look, going in the, into the cave with the experience of the upper ground. Um, the, the former typology I show, uh, showed you is, has, has been a, um, a photograph. But if uh, you try to reconstruct the process of construction, then um, you uh, structure the, the typologies a different way, especially concerning the sunken courtyard, because there you go in the cave exactly as you do in the, the cliff, only you create a cliff. So I will, exp I will go in, uh, into some details of the construction for this um, devalorizing the the, the presented typology, the categorization of material, uh, the categorization criteria could be the material or could be structural similarities without, with other buildings. I mentioned uh, something with uh, the roof and there are works where this, the, the construction, the, these independent, the so-called constructed caves, the independent, uh, the hooped yaodongs are are compared with uh, traditional Chinese houses and they, they, they make an, a quite different sense than the one that I presented here. The social space, the ethnic groups, uh, inform what is about my interest, I will explain uh, some aspects in the main course and some have to uh, remain still as uh, questions, especially the symbolic and function of Building of, um, of digging a pit, of digging a hole with the inspiration from the prehistoric archaeology of Bailey. Now, uh, I said that the constructing process gives another idea of, uh, of what, how it becomes what it is uh, called. The, and especially the fact of time that is absent in the typology I pre presented. The construction of a cliff cave is more easy that you have to make it flat, then you begin to, go, um, to dig the caves. At the end, you have the arcs with the construction of the inner circles. And if there's any cost here, that would be added. What is, I, I found more interesting is the construction of the sunken court here. You do not make the, the whole court, you just make a trench. And then you begin with the poles, which you do not see here. Then you remove the, you, then the, the, the main part, the bulk of the mass is removed. And in several stages, they continue to dig the hole. What seems to be interesting, and I say seem, it depends. If you ask, you get the answer. If you don't ask, you just oversee that, is the fact of time. Time for what? for letting the moisture go, uh, go out. If you ask uh, how long does it take, how many people you need in the sense of how, then uh, you couldn't make a rational um, equation because it is not only how much labor is needed, um, it is also related to the time, how much uh, time you need to get the moisture out of the hole if you want to uh, to walk there, or if even uh, more interesting, if you want to stay there. So how long it takes? You can find very diverse uh, answers in the literature from three weeks to three months to three years, depending how you put the question. And for me as an, as an engineer, this removing the moisture becomes a leading factor, it's not how it looks like, is it a hole or is it a rectangular or whatever.
and it has, of course, a quite different symbolical value than the, the appearance. Talking about the material, uh, the bricks I, um, I mentioned for the, for instance, um, the independent, uh, the Hutma Yaudon, uh, they are made from the same material. So, in somehow, you continue, you continue the, um, the material continues from the earth and becomes an artificial cave. That is the reason why uh, Jean Paul Loup considers it as an artificial cave, the construction over the earth as a continuation of the digging process. Um, what is for me also interesting is um, in this photograph, the modern photograph, how many persons are present. I don't say engaged, that would be a false question. How many persons are present? And we'll see another photograph. You can count the person. Um, this is I'm talking about the, the social space, which is more or less neglected in the literature. Uh, this is um, an old, old 17th century uh, woodcut for the constructing of a uh, round earth wall. It looks very similar, that is from uh, this, uh, in, the, um, uh, in one of the Compendia of the um, uh, Ming uh, Jin, of the Ming, uh, end of the Ming uh, dynasty, because of the Qing dynasty, the 17th century onward, and reported by Joseph Needham as a history of um, the civiliz um, science civilization in China in the 50s. To say all the similarities, uh, these exist in all today. This is a photograph from Jean Paul Luther in the um, uh, 80s, 90s. And again, I do not know whether all these people can walk there. You would find some. Um, notions, some, some remarks in the um, in people in, in uh, literature reporting uh, this process of constructing in the sense that um, the constructing of the Yaodong uh, needs uh, a social solidarity of mutual help. I think it is not so much helping just sitting there, staying there. I would say this is uh, a mise en matière, a materialization of social memory of the people who are contributing in the social process of building what they are doing, of uh, the building what is building there, or uh, the, um, uh, the, the bricks uh, fabricated uh, in the previous photograph. And so to conclude, um, I try to go beyond the factual interpretations and um, ideological pre-assumptions of in the process of civilization, trying to find anthropological approaches and anthropological questionings. Some are already, some questions or some um, comments of this art are already present in history, in, uh, in the work of uh, Jean Paul Loup, which is the history of architecture and anthropologists at the same time. Um, saying that Pit dwellings, the stage in the development of people's attachment to the land, is more than leaving the pit for the past. Um, and it is precisely a prehistoric archaeologist who put the question, what does it mean to dig, to build a hole? Um, cutting the surface is a book uh, that you can find in the, um, uh, in the fair here, uh, 2018 appeared. Constructing a round earth wall or constructing an amount of bricks, etc., can be considered and analyzed as an interaction process inside a given community. Now I come to my Muslim community, to my communities. Um, it is not the religion that interests me, it is the, the way um, certain local communities um, organize and uh, particip uh, their participation in um, communal uh, work. It could be um, guided by the local um, leader uh, the, the, the local representative of the Communist Party, but how they organize this day, the next day, the other day, what uh, happens on Friday, and things like that, that can be very particular and um, very um, attached to the local community. And what does it mean to um, to give the, the, the notion of continuation of the memory? And uh, 
That's why I mentioned here the way the Muslim community of Nisha in organizing and symbolically connoting the digging and constructing actions that has to be still elaborated. Thank you for your attention.